Welcome to the Bold Pen Mentors video series where we talk all things personal finance with industry leaders. I'm your host, Haven Coleman, and I am here today to learn with you. So here in the Bold Pen, we are so excited to be joined by this amazing guest on such a timely topic. So Sonia is actually the founder of Castellan Tax Services. She is an experienced educator in the area of tax preparation and financial coaching. So that's such a cool combination. I feel like we don't get that a lot, but um, love that she's here in the studio today to kind of give us the lowdown on what we really need to know about our taxes. And just a little bit of background on her. Sonia is actually um, kind of her mission in life is to create a community of support and empowerment for all her clients through her company and her social media. So she's an amazing educator and very passionate passionate about providing specialized services to the BIPOC community specifically. So we're just super excited to have um, Sonia in the studio today. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Haven, for having me on. I'm really, really excited to be here today, especially since we will be discussing some very fun topic that I love, love, especially during this yes. easy season. <laughs> That's amazing. I hope you can get us excited about the topic of taxes because I know for a lot of people that's like their, oh, that's their least favorite. But I think this conversation will help us actually get excited about learning more and just um, really kind of taking advantage of all the benefits that we have um, kind of as, yeah, as citizens. So I'm excited to jump in. Um, but before we kind of get too deep in the weeds on taxes, I would love to start out by just hearing a little bit about your background. Um, could you kind of tell us how you decided to pursue a career in tax planning and kind of teaching people about this topic? Yes. So um, first off, I label myself as actually a first gen Latinx tax professional. And as you mentioned before, I really do help and equip the BIPOC um, community with not the, the knowledge, but as well as for the tools so that they can pay less to the tax man and then also enabling them to take back control of their financial destinies. And here okay. in my firm, you know, we go through and provide personalized guidance and we have a strong commitment Huge. to education. So okay. I stand dedicated along with my team to ensure that every member of our community strides confidently towards a future of financial empowerment and security. So that is just who I am and what had inspired like me <laughs> right, to pursue this career. Oh my goodness. Wow. I don't know where to begin, but um, I know for <laughs> sure. Probably so many things. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but for sure, I, it was like right after post-graduation, um, I actually entered um, corporate America at the age of 21. So it was right out of college. Nice. I, I started off as an associate for a media department um, at a consulting okay. company in um, Stanford, Connecticut. And where my role was to just kind of focus more on like the data research. And mm. while being in corporate America, I had such a huge aspiration to just really be on top of the corporate ladder because I seen everyone around me already getting promoted, especially at such a young age. And my goal was to be on the top by the age of 30. Love that. <laughs> yeah. So wow. I knew that I had like the potential, right. To like really reach that goal. <sighs> Unfortunately, I had a really, really harsh realization um that really kicked in and that was my lack of money management so mm. where where i grew up i grew up in a very traditional latino household setting and unfortunately money itself was just a taboo topic so mm. interesting <laughs> my parents would try to not have the money conversation in front of us but when they do happen to have it it would intensify and so yeah. I knew that money was really not an, a, a discussion to be brought up at all in the household setting. Yeah. And on top of that, right, I thought that, you know, seeing my parents live off of, you know, paycheck to paycheck, I thought that was a norm. And, and, that, right. and I took that with me, especially when I decided to move out of my parents' home and, you know, live on my own, you know, with my corporate job, I was able to... Um, at that time, financially, uh, lived by myself in a, in a studio apartment and near my sure. job. But it got pretty bad when I was living up a lifestyle, keeping up with my corporate friends at that time by going out, having lunch and dinner dates, bar hopping, uh, also trying to keep up with like the latest fashion trend. <laughs> 
and eventually oh, so calm. <laughs> I mean it's a it's a woman's dream to be like having like all of these fans I know stuff and like living the life and looking like a cool, yeah. cool woman, especially in corporate America. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. But That's so true. But yeah, I mean, I uh, with that though, I accumulated thirty five thousand dollars in credit card debt. And yeah, that was bad. Funny. It was real bad. And I knew that I really needed to get my financial situations in order. So I have decided after having a really heart to heart moment with my sister, and I'm the oldest in my family. And I spoke with my sister, who is the youngest. Um, she right. opened my eyes and told me like, you need to go on a budget. Have you thought about that? And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I should. And so I decided to go, I guess you can say on a transformative journey to like self-educating myself in personal finance. And so I started to just wow. binge watch on YouTube. Uh, I started to watch The Budget Mom, as well as Rose Hahn, who used to be known as Investing with Rose at that time. And then I also started to follow some of like the personal financial creators. Um, more, I was more focused on or more intrigued by Janice Torres, by Yo Quiero Dinero. And Love her. I know she's super amazing, very inspirational. She's amazing. <laughs> so I yes. shout out to her for having her be a part of my journey. Um, because of them, obviously, I was then able to really get gain a good grasp of how personal finance is and how to you know combat the situation that I was in based on the the tips and tricks that they have provided, as well as the motivation to really just help you reach your financial goal. Um, but yeah, so super. that. Um, you know, during the pandemic, right, when we were all locked up around 2020, um, I was actually scrolling through social media and then I actually encountered uh, a particular post that really did spark my interest in taxation. And so with me having already a background um, as a data analyst, because I was doing a lot of data research, I then decided, heck, let's look into um, to see how taxes work. And, you know, I was already fueled too by the desire to really serve my community because I was already starting to do that um, with my friends and family when it came to the personal finance finance side. And so I figured, oh, That's what, amazing. <laughs> let's, let's see how taxes work. And right. I'm not going to lie, it was a very, very tough <laughs> subject, but I was very fortunate to have a mentor who really did guide me throughout the whole process uh, matter of fact, when I started tax school, it was like about 40, 46 of us. And then towards the end of the program, only like 12 people. <laughs> wow. That. So That's, yeah, it, that makes sense. <laughs> that checks out, honestly, with knowing about taxes, it's such a complex topic. I, I applaud you for your determination to kind of keep going with that. Yes. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And then with that, you know, with having a, such a great support group, as well as my mentor, uh, that actually actually led me to launch my business, Castellan Tax Services, where not only has my firm be become like a sanctuary of support and empowerment for the BIPOC community, but it definitely evolved through collaboration and social engagement as well, which hence led us to that. you finding me. <laughs> On yes. Instagram. <laughs> wow. What a cool story. That is honestly so encouraging. I feel like for many of our members, um, the, the, some of the things you kind of went through in your journey are so familiar and so common. Um, I think just, you know, it's very relatable to have, you know, some of these financial troubles earlier on as we're kind of figuring out this world of personal finance. So it's really cool that you were able to kind of turn that around and become uh, now an educator of people. So thank you for sharing. That is an incredibly empowering story. So love to hear that. Thank you. Well, um, I just want to, I was going to say, kind of gain some wisdom from your experience. So you survived, it sounds like, um, a fiery trial of this uh, this tax planning school. Uh, you were the last one of the last 12 remaining. Um, but I'd love to kind of dive into some of these um, principles that you've learned, just kind of helping people with their taxes. And that would just be a, a really great thing to dive into, especially now that we're entering into the scary tax season uh, come April. So would love to, for our members who may not be as familiar, when it comes to tax planning, what are the key factors that individuals should consider beyond their basic W-2 income? And if you could kind of define that for us as well. Oh yeah, for sure. So for those who are not familiar with what tax planning is, um, basically it's an analysis of your current tax situation 
And it definitely involves with strategic decision making to help ma- minimize your tax liability and also maximize your financial outcomes. So this is particularly good for individuals, though, who have like multiple source of income, such as like independent or freelance work, um, rental income, investments, or they have a business, right? Um, just know that each of those uh, sources have various tax implications. And so with tax mm. planning, right, one will be able to understand how each income stream is taxed so that it can help them optimize their tax strategies and also try to minimize their tax liabilities. And with tax planning, right, uh, we look into some of the factors, right, into determining what kind of deductions and credits you may be eligible for that will significantly reduce um, your taxable income. And, you know, these types of deduction can include like, you know, the mortgage interest, property tax, um, if you have done any, you know, charitable contribution or even in your retirement account, if you had like certain medical expenses, um, those are some of the types of tax breaks that you can qualify for. Um, on the tax credit side, obviously, like the more common ones that everyone knows about is like the child tax credit, the earned income credit, um, as well as the educational credit. Um, those um, those credits can really help reduce the amount of taxes that's being owed. And then along with that, right, when we're analyzing the taxpayer situation, we look into to see like, okay, before. Before we calculate and provide an estimated tax amount that they may, like, they may likely owe, we kind of want to, well, not kind of, we actually want to see, like, is there any other factors when it comes to just paying the individual themselves first before they're paying the tax man? And this is where we mm. look into to see whether or not some of them will be, um, not even some, it will be all, like, to have them contribute to like a pre-tax account, which is like, you know, the proper okay. 401, traditional IRA, the HSA, um, all that fun stuff, because that actually, you know, the goal is to reduce your taxable income. And we want to mm. make sure that by reducing your taxable income, you're reducing your tax bill. Um, and not just a short term, but also for a long term benefit as well. And when we are looking into these factors, right, we want to make sure that before we implement it, that they're able to financially keep up with that particular strategy, because obviously we don't know what their financial situation is. So it could be that you might have some debt that you're still currently paying off. Like myself, (laughs) I'm currently paying off my credit card. Right. But we look into all those factors and we really dig in deeper just to make sure that when we're putting together this tax planning, um, it is personalized and it fits with your situation. Because the last thing what we need for our taxpayers, right, even my own client, is to feel so overwhelmed and stressed over money. And that's the last thing that we want is them to be so overwhelmed and not feeling confident um, and making yeah. them feel like they're losing control of their finances when they're really not. We just got to make sure that we're asking these tough questions. And I know some people tend to think you're asking a lot, but that's because when we're putting together this plan, we want to make sure it's something that you can keep up with. <laughs> like, the last yeah. thing I need is- That like, makes sense. And, yes. So it's hard. Right. And, and we got to look into all those type of factors before we even put this plan yeah. together. And I was going to say, you really just gave us a whole overview of this conversation and that answer. That was so helpful, just kind of all the different factors that we're going to consider. I love that you kind of explained and um, just really gave us a scope of why are we even caring about doing tax planning per se? Why don't we just throw it into, you know, a do-it-yourself tax service? Um, So I think that that's really great. And kind of diving into more of what you said, especially towards the beginning, you mentioned different types of income, such as investments, rental income, or freelance work. How do those three specifically impact tax planning strategies? Could you lay those three out more specifically for us? Oh, yeah. Um, So the type of income, uh, well, let's, you know, with investment income first, right? Um, When it comes to that, we need to factor in if you are receiving any dividends, interest, um, if you have sold off any security that's resulting in a capital gain. We want to make sure that we're factoring that in because the thing is that with these particular incomes, it's being taxed on based on the individual tax bracket. And so we as tax planner, when we look at that um, information, we need to determine one, right? If the asset Mm -hmm. is either a long-term or short-term capital gain, if they happen to sell that asset. 
And we need to make sure right. that we are calculating that with the appropriate tax rate. So, and that could range from yeah. zero to 20%. Again, depending on the taxpayer tax bracket. Um, another factor, right, um, is that we need to look into to see whether these securities, right, um, if they were sold, uh, was it sold at a loss? And if so, we may be able to offset some of that losses um, mm. from, you know, towards the capital gain so that we can reduce that taxable income. And for many folks who um, who are into or has sold securities, you guys might have heard of this term called uh, the tax loss harvesting. And it can be very, very beneficial. So just to clarify, with a tax loss, um, you're, this is basically when you are you've invested in something and it's actually um, proving to be, you know, your investment is declining in that particular year. So you can actually use that amount that was de it declined to apply that to your taxable income and kind of deduct that. Just is that how I'm understanding that correctly? I just want to make sure that people understand that concept a little bit. Yes, more yes, clearly. yes. You broke it down pretty good at that. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, sure. good. Um, and I, I want to also mention that with, you know, with that being um, taken down into consideration, um, it's very beneficial too, because if you are expecting, right, to receive a significant increase in the income, um, it's really good to just apply those losses to help reduce that. Or right. in this case, another end is to like, uh, we always tell people like, it's good to also have your investment portfolios rebalanced again, because when mm. you're looking at the overall, it might freak a person out. Um, but when we're letting them know from a tax perspective how it can be beneficial for them, especially because it just helped them um, in terms of with tax savings, then they feel pretty content and understanding of, oh, okay, I see. Um, this is yeah. kind of how yeah. it is. And that's how the wealthy uh, Americans do it. <laughs> they're right you know, that's really good to know yes yes for sure so so yeah so that's that's one aspect of like the investment income um another one uh for like uh the businesses and rental uh, and for those who have rental properties i always tell people that before we even start with the analyzation of that particular scenario we definitely need record like bookkeeping or record um records any type of records that lays out like Sure. In, in your expenses, because having this information is so crucial because we're trying to determine how much of your income had or how much of that uh, business or rental pro um, property had produced an income and what are the expenses so that we can go ahead and determine what are some of the eligible deductions that could be written off on the tax return. Also, sure. Right. With having this information too, it, this really does allow us to see if your rental or your business is profitable or it's a yeah. loss. And right. the reason why we need this information is that if we happen to see that in that particular case, you are reporting or have in your, um, in your records that is showing a profit, then this is where you really need to set aside funds for the income tax. And Keep in mind, too, for business owners, um, not only are you responsible for the income tax, but you are also responsible for the self-employment tax. So we also need mm. to, to um, have that into consideration because okay. a lot of people tend to do the whole minimum, like 10 percent rule, like self-employment tax alone is already 15.3 percent. So Ooh, <laughs> ouch. So that you're not even close right. <laughs> to covering even I mean yeah. for the self-employment tax. Which is hence why we yeah. really, really push on tax planning for those who have these type of uh, situation because we want to sure. make sure that we're being proactive and avoiding those tax bill shock. Yeah. And I also want to point out too, like, um, I would love if our members could expand even the way they're thinking about small businesses, because someone who may be thinking about starting a small business may be thinking, oh, yes, I'm going to open a brick and mortar shop. And, you know, that's my small business, but it's not really, it can be anything like DoorDash, Uber, it can be, um, you know, being an influencer and getting money from TikTok because you're awesome on TikTok and a lot of people watch you. And so you're, you're getting paid and that all of those things are taxable 
um, freelance work. So I, that is kind of a crazy thing to consider too. Of you know, you, I, I've had the experience where you know my husband did a little door dashing in college, and he had a giant tax hit. He did not expect towards the end of the year because he was like, well, I guess I did a little too much too much door dashing to really you know, I guess make a profit. So yeah, it was a that's an unfortunate realization. I feel like many young people mm-hmm. have as they do these freelance mm-hmm. jobs. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I will always tell people though with those particular situations too, is that when you're thinking like oh my goodness i made too much money like i have to pay all these taxes like just know that it's just how the system is like um the more right. money you make the more you're paying in taxes but i always tell people look at it on the positive side to that because that just shows that you were making money <laughs> like that's good okay. that's true <laughs> um and i always tell yeah. people too like on, on your tax return, believe it or not, if you are reporting a profit, they give you a tax break for making a profit off your off your business or your you know freelance work, believe it or not. Uh, and and, that's, and awesome. that's where I really try to bring like the positive side of the tax because everyone thinks like, oh my gosh, here we go again. I just keep paying taxes, 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 something, <laughs> right? But I always tell them, right. like, no, there's another side to it. <laughs> and obviously, we got to yes. put some plans um, and strategies into place so that way you don't have to feel like this again the following year right. when we're right. doing the tax return. Um, but yeah, that, excellent point. Mm-hmm. If you are having to pay more in taxes, the the other side of that is you are making money, which is the great thing. We tend to forget about that whenever the tax. Uh, report comes in and it's like kind of scaring us. So I love, I love that positivity mm-hmm. there. Um, and you also mentioned kind of at the beginning, some, this word called deductions. I'm really curious if you could kind of uh, give us some often overlooked deductions or credits that individuals should be aware of. Um, I'm wondering how our members can maximize their deductions within the bounds of the tax code oh, that you'd recommend. Believe it or not, and I see this a lot, <laughs> especially, uh, especially with business owners, is that they're not taking advantage of the retirement okay. account or through their employer, the cafeteria plan. Um, so mm. for example, right. Um, when you have uh, an opportunity to have a retirement account, such like a 401 um, through your employer, and sure. that's an opportunity for you to start contributing, even if it's small, because the reason is that it's going to give you a tax break. Um, especially because it's reducing your, again, your income. And then when you report it on your tax return, you're not reporting the full gross amount. You're reporting the net amount Mm. after your contributions to the retirement account. Um, Another thing too, is that if your employer offers, uh, you know, an insurance plan, like, you know, health, dental, uh, vision, take advantage of that because that's also reducing your gross amount that's going to be then reflected on your W-2 and then that gets reflected into your tax return. Um, another thing for that I always tell people too, uh, especially with the business owners, is that, you know, start, um, if you can't open up a 401 based on your business structure, right? Um, consider opening up a traditional IRA. Anyone can open one up. Um, right. And, some people uh, also are like, I don't have insurance because I get it as business owners, insurance can be costly, but this is where you, you know, my, my take is that, well, first of all, health insurance, I know can be costly, but just know that you're going to get a tax break because you're paying insurance and that's going to be right. written off on your tax return. So yeah. I also think that you also want to m- make sure that you have a safety <laughs> cushion as well because god forbid something happens to you and if you don't have health insurance right those medical bills yeah it's it's mm. it's, it's already expensive i know i have medical bills that i'm still um trying to uh sort out don't we all but yeah sure um, but i always tell people you know take advantage of this because this definitely gives you a tax break and then when i'm also analyzing right the taxpayer situation if i feel like either we maximize the pre-tax side or if they're feeling, you know, based on their financial situation, if they have no debt, um, this is where I tell people, hey, instead of contributing to a traditional IRA, have you thought maybe con- contributing to a Roth retirement account? Just because in the future, when you decide to, you know, go into retirement, you can take these withdrawals tax free. And mm. and some people are like, oh, wow, I didn't think of that. I'm like, yeah, I mean, because taxes are going to continuously go up year over year so right it's better like you know again then depend on our situation if i feel like if they're putting money into a, a pre-tax account but they're not really getting a much of a tax break on their tax return 
but I know that in long in long term that if they were to contribute into a Roth, they're gonna not they're gonna have these withdrawals tax free. And so this is where I let them, you know, I give them their the what if scenarios. And a lot of people who are debt sure. free will go with like, you're right. I would like to you know live comfortably during my retirement um, age. So and avoid paying these taxes. So I'll go ahead and yeah. contribute now to that Roth, and it's really good. Uh, um, but yeah, I always tell people take advantage of that because <laughs> it really does yeah. help out. It really does help out. That's huge. I love how the way you broke that down. I think that that really helps us kind of know what retirement account to go with, um, depending on our situation. Because I think sometimes we hear these um, jargony terms like Roth IRA or traditional IRA or 401k that I feel like they um, they can be confusing, but it's, it's really nice to do it the way you broke it down is if you are debt free, go with this one. And um, if you're kind of still having debt, then um, you just go with the traditional IRA or always we recommend to our members if you do have an employer sponsored 401k. So where your employer is, you know, matching your uh, contributions that's a huge uh, benefit to you and uh, definitely some we like to joke free money that you're missing out on if you don't uh if you don't take advantage so definitely very helpful there mm -hmm. okay one thing i was going to say about your answer is i think that a lot of people don't really factor tax planning into their business decisions i think that if they took that more into account then they wouldn't feel so bad about you know taking on a a large expense like health insurance. I think that is such a good point. Like, you know, they're, they're thinking about it from a revenue perspective only like, oh, this is decreasing my revenue. But if you think about the tax aspect, that's a whole nother, um, a whole nother benefit to them. And I wonder for our members with businesses or side hustles, what considerations they should kind of keep in mind for these tax planning tips that you're giving. And I also know you have a lot of expertise on business structures and how those can affect tax liability. So would you mind breaking that down for us as well? Oh, yeah, for sure. So when it comes to the business taxes, right? Um, you know, the problem is that, you know, they're here seeing like, okay, this is how much I'm making and revenue. Um, this is how much my expenses were. Um, some people then tend to worry like, well, this is then my bottom total. And they complain with like, well, I'm always owing. Why am I always owing? And I always tell people like, well, if you were to put um, tax planning into place, then we can actually really break down on like a what's going on. We can see like if you are on at least on a quarterly basis, if you are making a, a net profit, then this is where we again will need to then be strategic and consider into like, OK, before we pay um, to the tax man, let's look into see what we can do to keep a little bit more money in your pocket. This is where we then I dig in deeper with the business owners like, OK, is there any future expense that you anticipate to see? And if so, would you rather make those purchases now? So that way we can reduce your right. quarterly payment um, to the IRS as well as the state. If you happen to reside in a state that does um, that also does state taxes. Um, another thing, too, with, with tax planning, right, for business owners is that. Again, you know, we're analyzing your current situation, um, but we're also looking to see, right, if you are showing a significant amount in, in that profit in your business, this allows us to see whether or not you are eligible for a specific tax entity, if you happen to have an LLC, that is, and that is deciding whether we should tax the LLC as an S or C Corp. Now. Mm. I know a lot of people, and I tend to battle with a lot of, of so-called influencers online who are, <laughs> who think they're tax gurus themselves, <laughs> given like misleading information, especially when it comes to the LLC part. Um, a lot of them okay. will push on and say, hey, you got to file as S Corp or C Corp in this case, like for those particular tax entity, right? <laughs> they're... It's very, very expensive. And this is why I mm. tell people before you even jump the gun and, it's, and, and basically say, I want to be taxed this way, we right. will need to analyze your business financials to see whether or not it makes sense. Because with being on S and C Corp, you have to be on payroll. That's by law. Mm. So you have to pay payroll taxes, You have to, which is including like the FICA, on unemployment tax, uh, even the state tax. There's a lot of the states will require you to play, uh, would require you to pay the like SDI, like which is the disability insurance. Um, wow. Another one is they, some states has their own unemployment tax. 
some of them have like the wow. family <laughs> and paid leave tax that you gotta pay. It's, it's it's all these little things. It adds up. So this is why totally. totally when we're reviewing the information, we look to see like if you do have enough net profit and you already maxed out all of your expenses, then this is where we then go in and say, okay, well, what are the one way that we can reduce this net profit um, is by having you be on S Corp. And by doing so, we are reducing your, um, well, reducing your self-employment tax um, because we're saving on the double okay. taxation. If you're, you know, if you decide mm-hmm. if that is the route we feel like would be beneficial for the business. Um, I actually interesting. I, I had a client recently, right. That I helped. She actually made, I believe it was like close to $97,000 in that business profit. And wow. wow, when she came to me for tax planning, she, her concern uh, was that she was going to owe a big, big bill um, if she was to continue to just file through her personal. And she heard about escort. Sure. She wasn't sure if it was the right uh, time for her. So when we review their information, right. I was like, yes, actually, this is perfect that you and you came on time. So what we're going to do and we recommend is that um, making sure that your LLC is active. And if so, then we will go ahead and then file for an S Corp election with the IRS. Mm. That took a couple of weeks for her to nice. get approved. But with that, um, she was actually able to save um, with S Corp. I think it was close to fourteen thousand um, dollars in, in ta- oh, wow. like in taxes by having her switch to S Corp. And the reason is because we were able to save on the double taxation side for the self employment because that's a lot already. Um, sure. With right. self employment, um, it's fifteen point three, but as S Corp, you only pay seven point five percent of that. So you're slashing mm, it in half. Okay. So that's kind of that's one yeah, of the yeah. benefits of having the S Corp status. However, I always tell people, again, it really depends on your finance, your business financials. If you qualify, great. If you don't, it would not make sense for you to be on S Corp where you're gonna have to pay right, a tremendous right. amount. And then at this point, you're bleeding money, <laughs> as I always yeah, say. Right. <laughs> so right. So, that's true. Yeah. Yes. That's that's kind of that is super. Yes, helpful. and it's and I think it's very important for people to remember that. So please, <laughs> if you're out there watching yeah. all these yeah. so-called influencers are trying providing you tax tip, reach out to a tax professional to ensure that that particular yeah. <laughs> situation works right. if it's for you. Because <laughs> if not. They'll set you straight. Yeah. Yes. Don't don't just apply on your own. That sounds good. Also, I, I think your point about those little fees add up. That's so true of really any financial endeavor. Um, it's always good to read the fine print before you kind of uh, just jump into something that sounds good because you heard it online or things like that. Um, there There's maybe some hidden fees that you may not be aware of. So I think that's a really really good point. Um, and I'm curious, I know you mentioned uh, just in that kind of answer a little bit about business business expenses. And I know in our previous conversation, um, kind of before this call, we had been talking a little bit about how people tend to write off everything as a business expense. I know that there's like a joke um, kind of uh, through a show I watched that always talks about, well, everything can be a business expense if you really think it should be. So um, could you explain a little bit about what a business expense really should be and what you can write off and what you should probably not try to write off when you are making these purchases um you, you gotta make sure right that these are truly ordinary business expense okay and and that means mm-hmm. that they have to be used for business only because the problem is is that the irs look at these write-offs from a technicality perspective so what i mean by that mm. is that if they happen to find that a purchase can be utilized as a personal use, like now or in the future, then they will then consider that as not an ordinary business expense, and they're going to likely disallow it if you happen to get audited. Um, because they're looking Ooh, at it from, right. again, a technicality perspective, like, well, then she could eventually use this in, as a personal use. <laughs> Right. So you're saying that my morning coffee does not qualify as a business business expense, even if it fuels my work that I, you know, am working on that I can't expense my Starbucks purchases. <laughs> so 
That's why I tell people, be very careful with that type of stuff, especially with meals, because yeah. you could be, yeah, you're right. Like, well, I'm in the business or I'm about to head to work. I had to crop a cup of coffee. Like they All might right. see this as a, like, again, it has to kind of tell a story too. Like your, your expenses got to tell a story. Um, if they see like you have been to, okay, let's say they look into your business and they see the operations hours on Monday and Friday, but you may purchase this on a Saturday or a Sunday. They might say like, Ooh. well, based on your the information that we got on the business, you're not working on weekends and you just happen to go crazy on these expenses unless you were doing some sort of like team party or you were taking out your team or a client. You have to have concrete proof. That's another thing too. Like yeah. even though some of them, they might see it again as a like, well, this could technically be a personal. If you have the backup proof, which is like a receipt and even like a date and the time and the person who you met, um, they mm. might say like, okay, well now you have some proof that you did indeed utilize or you did make these purchases for the business that's just business related. Sure. But again, a lot of people don't do that. <laughs> so this is yeah. given the IRS that am of like, well, they don't have proof, so we're going to go ahead and disallow it, which is going to then result in a tax bill shock for these taxpayers. And so... Yeah, I always tell people, talk to your professional when you're going th and going through these expenses with them, okay? Because right. you want to make sure that this is okay. Tax professionals should be doing their due diligence anyways, and they should be educating their clients on these write-offs and letting them know the risk behind it. This is why when I sit with my clients, I make sure when I'm looking at their profit and loss, I'm questioning them because I want to know for sure, mm -hmm. like, are these truly ordinary expenses? And if so, great. But if I happen to have even an inkling that it might have been used as a personal use, this is where I really do give them that whole, like, okay, we're going to proceed with caution, just letting you know. Right. If you aren't able to produce proof to me, I can tell you that the IRS is not going to be happy with that either because I already know. Yeah like based on me continuing to take these courses with them, what they're looking out for. And you'd be very, very surprised yeah. at, again, how they view things. And this is where I'm trying to also relay that back to my clients, like, or to anybody who's looking to work with them. Right. Like, this is how it works. And we're going to make sure it makes sense. And it tells a story. Yeah. Because yeah. anything that's off, because if even I get a small inkling that something is right, I guarantee you they're going to feel the same way too. <laughs> So absolutely yeah that is so helpful yeah so it's very important that we have these conversations and you talk talk to your professional if their profession is not educating you that's a good sign that you should consider switching because you don't okay. you don't want to be in a, in a situation yeah. where oh my goodness that i could get in trouble and i don't even know it right <laughs> right I feel like that's how so many, unfortunately, so many um, kind of allegations come with taxes. People don't even, they're not even aware they're committing the crime sometimes. Not not saying everyone out there is uh, totally righteous when it comes to, um, to, to, you know, tax evasion. But I think a lot of people just don't know mm -hmm. um, some of these mistakes they're making. And so that is a very scary reality. You know, it's, there's, it's no joke playing around with the IRS for sure. We all are aware of that, of that but mm -hmm. I think that's a really important <laughs> reminder. And I'm also curious, um, I kind of want to close out our interview you such a such a helpful interview by the way this has been so interesting uh, about just kind of when that line comes in for i think most people may have been familiar with kind of the do-it-yourself tax preparation softwares there's several big names out there i won't kind of name them um now in this this call but i know that people are familiar with those but when do you think it's time for people to bring in a professional versus relying on those or is there a specific line that you would recommend if you cross this it's time to hire a professional tax planner Oh, yes. I, I actually love this question because a lot of people tell me I get this every day on during these one on ones. I bet. So the only time I you should reach out to a tax professional, if you have a very complex situation where you have multiple streams of income and not just your W-2. OK, because if you have a W-2 okay. income, that's a simple situation that you can do yourself, honestly. And you can use okay, that's helpful. self service software. Um, but when you have all of this combined there's more than likely that you're going to end up with a tax bill. And this is where this is where you need to really talk to a professional who's going to really um, educate you, provide you the tools that you will need so that you can understand your situation. Not just some tax preparer who's just going to put an enter in data and call it a day. No, you need to know what's going on. 
how to prevent being in a situation like this again the following year. And hopefully that professional will be able to, you know, lay out some personalized strategic plans for you to implement in the current year and in the future. That is where I tell okay. people when you get to that point, go for it. Don't don't hesitate to reach out to a tax professional and make sure you find the right one. Because <laughs> there, yes. there are some out there. I love how you mentioned the mentorship piece earlier. Find someone who will actually take the time to educate you and mentor you. And I know you actually are working with Mentoro now to educate people through our platform. So any members who actually want to, to meet with you, Sonia, can actually find your resources through our platform. But I, I love your approach to um, tax preparation because you really take the time to sit down and educate people. So that's a huge piece I think people should be looking for if they're looking for a professional tax preparer. Yeah. And I'd love to also, if you could just share a little bit about where our members can find out more about you. I know I kind of mentioned the Mentora side. So uh, would you share a little bit more about your your business and how they can find out more about you if they want to go in deep with your services? Oh, yes, for sure. So you guys can check me out at CastellanTaxServices.com. Um, I also am um, offering a 30-minute consultation call. So that will information will be in the website. I am taking on new clients. So if you are interested, I suggest that you book fast because we are getting pretty slammed on that firm. I also encourage you guys to give me a follow too on either Instagram or TikTok. Uh, I do provide a lot of uh, more free tax tips for you guys, especially if you are entrepreneurs. Uh, that is my specialty in there, um, business tax. So feel free to check it out. I think a lot of people based on the feedback really appreciate the information that I had laid out, especially because my method of really educating the community is very simple and straight to the point and not <laughs> with the lingo and jargon because who has time for that? <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's so true. I love that so much. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Sonia. This was seriously an amazing um, summary of what we need to know about taxes, especially for those members who kind of are, you know, entering into the, the freelance work for the first time. I think that that's, this is going to be great for their overviews. So really appreciate your time today. And um, thank you, members, as always, for joining us in the bullpen. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Thank you.